What does the road look like ahead here in Toledo in the fight against coronavirus? Are you seeing any light here at this tunnel? Well, um, good afternoon to you, first of all. Uh, I'm watching Toledo closely. I, I know there's a lot of concern in the area, just in the regular cases that you are seeing, but also, um, you know, the proximity to Detroit. So we are really watching the data in your area and working closely with the local health departments. Um, do I see light at the end of the tunnel? I absolutely do, but we know that it's going to be a couple hard weeks. We, we know we really are seeing that uptick in cases. So uh, we'll be working very closely alongside, you know, the mayors and the communities in your area. You've talked about those peaks. When do you still expect the numbers to peak here across Ohio? You know, our estimates are still largely in the mid to late April to first week or so of May. I know that's a wide swath. We've looked at a couple different models. The one we're using most closely still is the Ohio State model. It's in the middle of the chimes, more what Cleveland Clinic had looked at, and then the Institute for Health Metrics from Washington. And, and, and we think that's a pretty good guess, although, you know, as with everything with this virus, you know, a lot will be, depend on how well um, we keep doing the social distancing, which is really what's given us the great advantage in Ohio. And then um, just we're looking a lot at flare ups. We've had we see even in the Toledo area I used in the modeling today that I, I, I showed on on our video uh, that Toledo's had a few hot spots as well. So so I, what happens in one one city might be a little bit different than another city in Ohio in terms of that timing as well. Uh, do you see a need right now to clamp down more on that stay at home order in order to decrease the number of cases? Well, you know, we're clamped down pretty far. I think the bigger question is how well all of us can maintain our our um, ability to keep doing it. It's hard. I, I, I feel that same frustration. I haven't been able to see, um, you know, our, our parents, um, my husband's parents. I, I, it's frustrating, and I know that it's hard to know we have a couple more weeks of this ahead. But if we can keep up what we're doing, I just saw some fascinating data that comes from the, inst, uh, the Institute at um, ODOT on traffic data. It's showing, again, more evidence that Ohioans are really taking this seriously, but we have to keep taking it seriously. Um, I, I think we've maxed what we can order into existence. There's always caveats. The governor mentioned today in the press briefing um, in some local communities needing to take action. But I, I just really hope that any one of your viewers who sees this, it, it seems so simple, but it is having a profound, profound effect on our state. Uh, we, we have flattened that curve in ways I didn't actually believe was possible that we could be as successful as we're being, but don't give up. Can we talk about social distancing a little further? We have, you know, people that have their own interpretation of this. They're still having those family gatherings saying, hey, at least if you stay six feet apart from each other, we're OK. Is that irresponsible or even dangerous at this time? You know, at this point, um, and I know especially during a week when we're having major holidays and a couple religions, it's hard. I, I really want to get together with people that I've done things with my, my whole children's whole lives from the time they were born. And it's really important to keep your, your limit to just a couple of your most intimate family members or sort of feeling like tribes a bit, like whoever your small group and and try to resist that want to spread it, even if you're six feet apart. Um, this is a very infectious virus. And, you know, we really want to limit the amount of people we're exposing uh, to, to the same group through this period as much as possible. You have a lot of parents watching this each and every day, their kids at home. How would you, as a mother, how do you explain this to a child? And is it okay for kids to play with neighbors down the street? Oh, that's a hard one as well. Um, I feel for parents. I remember <laughs> that Staples commercial of it being the most happy time of the year <laughs> when your kids go to school. 
and I love my kids and I love being with them, but it's, it's hard to entertain your kids without the help of playgrounds and neighbors. But I, I really advise that again, you keep just in your immediate family, uh, do the best you can with social media and other ways to keep them connected because kids are just as likely to get this, just as likely to spread it. And um, so, so it's hard though. I just, again, I say these things knowing how absolutely hard it is to do. This coronavirus threat, it's not something that will go away soon, is it? No, unfortunately, um, it will be with us. Now, it won't hopefully be with us in this sort of sudden uptick in intensity. But until we have a vaccine and until we have protection across all of us, which is sometimes called herd immunity, um, we remain vulnerable. We remain vulnerable to upticks in it. Um, Dr. Fauci has talked about a surge in the fall, potentially. We are seeing in the Southern hemispheres that it's it's not going away seasonally. Um, so, so it's gonna be with us, but the good news is the more time we have bought getting through that this really rapid spread, uh, the more testing we'll have eventually the more gear we will have for our hospitals, uh, we'll be able to sort of stabilize in our handling of it, which means if we could test more widely, which is still our biggest barrier, we can do that contact tracing and be a little more discreet in who, who has been infected and who they've spread it to. But at this point, our most powerful weapons are what we're doing collectively. And when you say staying with this, could this become similar to the common seasonal flu? That's right. It, it really will, at some point here, most likely become something we see seasonally. We probably will, you know, coronavirus is from a family like the common cold, and we'll, we'll see potentially that's something we test for in a respiratory panel. So I could imagine someday that being something we test for. Now, when we have a vaccine, uh, that can make all the difference in something that we could all get immunity to uh, for a lot longer. The immunity we're seeing now that people are getting, there's still a lot of studies done, but it's not lifelong. And so the vaccine will be the most important weapon we have. The stay at home order here in Ohio extended until May 1st now. Uh, when do you anticipate that to be lifted? And once people start returning, how will that happen? Or Will that put us back at square one where we have more people out there spreading the virus again? We really have to consider how we move our way back. And that'll be something you'll see around the United States. A lot of work is being put into it now, even by our team, about how you responsibly and carefully do that. It's not a switch you flip. We can't do it overnight. Um, it'll probably start along the lines of, you know, still not having mass gatherings. Um, we're trying to look at ways once we have blood testing that if someone does have immunity, um, especially if they're otherwise healthy, being able to go back to work a little sooner in certain industries. But I suspect it will be a slow walk, not a on off switch. And, um, and that's something, you know, we're doing a lot of planning on now. Um, and we'll have to watch our numbers as we do it. So, you know, the biggest barrier that I fight and the thing that is really frustrating uh, still remains the lack of widespread testing because that would allow us to be a lot more surgical in our approach. So um, we're really, alongside many states, really enticing um, the fact that we really, we really need help getting that out to the states. Each day we're learning new things about this virus. Here in the state, what ethnic group appears to be getting hit the hardest right now, and, and why is that, do you think? I'm sorry, which? Um, ethnic group? You know, I, this virus um, does not discriminate in the sense that it's equally infectious to all of us, and I think that's really, really important to understand. Um, the spread of infectious disease, obviously, people that are more um, at risk um, in terms of autoimmune diseases, um, but also, you know, we do know that um, social determinants of health, if people are in confined living circumstances, um, 
that that will exacerbate the spread if they can't achieve that that um, social distancing. I've said all along in my career that um, housing is a health issue. Uh, you know, we have folks in nursing homes, in prisons that are closer together, and and so um, people that perhaps live in a setting, a residential setting with disabilities. So we have to really, I know our local health departments, our cities, our nonprofits are really working hard um, to help people that are disproportionately affected by many of the illnesses. Um, we've had existing struggles with this uh, before we had coronavirus, and we certainly know that everything about this virus is showing the chinks in our armor wherever they may be and and uh, more vulnerable folks are going to disproportionately probably be affected um, it's our job to try um, to be getting the resources out to communities that need it most and it won't be a government only job as we know we've always had to fight these wars whether they're infant mortality or maternal mortality that we know disproportionately affects populations um, it really takes a coalition of strategies, um, which takes all of us. Last question, I'll make it a two-parter here. Some advice, ways that we all, some steps we can all take uh, to keep our bodies in tip-top shape during this time mm -hmm. and the role those masks play. Uh, so, so as a person who has not seen exercise in two and a half months, um, you know, I think it's so vitally important that we develop some routines as we go through this strange altering of our timeline, our our sense of our life as normal. normal. And, and to the extent that you can, there's so many ways we can exercise at home, uh, but getting out in nature, sitting outside now that the weather is getting better, uh, doing some gardening, going for long walks, walking your dog, all those things. I've, I've always been a big advocate of um, the ordinary things add up. So all those walking and the steps you take really do add up. Uh, so I know if you're a person that's really used to having all your equipment at a gym, that's hard, but there are isometrics and great videos. And I, I've seen you know, that people are doing some unique ways of, of uh, getting their exercise in, but it is important. It's important for physical health, but it's really important for our mental health as well. <laughs> And I should take that advice, so. <laughs> yeah. All right, any inspirational thought you will give leaving uh, Northwest Ohioans here? Uh, well, first of all, I just want you to know, we I've been working very hard with many of the leaders in your community. Um, I, I've, I've been spending some time in your community before this even started. Uh, Toledo and all of Northwest Ohio really reach out to each other. I know there's a lot of fear. Um, I want you to be be really kind to each other. Uh, there are issues that we face, issues of stigma, issues of folks who are falling between the cracks. So to the extent that you can, first of all, keep, keep up what you're doing because I'll tell you, it sounds so low tech, but I think when the history books look back on what Ohioans did and what you have done, it's um, it's, it's just it's it's gonna have made a difference and saved lives. So don't give up. It's a war we're fighting, and we can't let this virus keep. We can't sit back passively. We have to do all we can, but also do all you can for the people around you, uh, the neighbor down down the street who maybe for whatever reason, it doesn't have family around or someone who can do those extra things. I know people are doing it. I'm watching on my street. Um, people are even doing it for me, knowing that I haven't seen a grocery store in two months. Um, please keep being kind to each other and uh, helping other people um, get through this together. Thank, thank you for all you're doing.